what I want to shift to is the reason that I have the two of you here, outside the fact that I just enjoy having the two of you guys to talk to, even if no one else ever listens to these. <laughs> I really don't really care. Actually, this is just great. But the, the opportunity of this conversation is that the two of you have both been on a very challenging journey where you had the coronavirus. My interactions with both of you are that it was not a life threatening, thank goodness, but it was severe. The two of you were tested in ways that I think none of us usually get tested. We, we've all had the flu, but I think what you both experienced was something much more significant. Now, the fact that you're both here, we're having this conversation is an indication of the fact that you're both okay. So I'm just so glad that both of you are okay. And what I want to do is give you a chance to share a little bit about your journey, what you've discovered. So Jessica, I'll start with you. Okay. If you'd be willing to share some of your experience. Yeah, thanks Nick for this opportunity to share my experience. Um, I had a fever for 17 days straight. I'd never had a fever since I was young. Uh, so to be honest, I wasn't even really sure what my normal body temperature is, which I thought it was, I'm going to speak in Celsius. I don't remember Fahrenheit anymore, but um, normally 36.1 or something, which, which is, is uh, much lower. 98.6 in the U.S., yes. Or 96 point something, maybe, because maybe. My, my body temperature is naturally lower. Okay. Uh, and I remember that because when I was a kid, my mother sent well, gave the doctor's office a note that said if she has, if Fahrenheit, it was anything higher than 97, that's a fever. Okay. But it actually became a complication here because uh, I was afraid people wouldn't take me seriously. So I was seeing um, a, basically a degree or two higher in Celsius than I normally do. So it's 38 or 37.6 or something. For me, it was much higher than my normal. Um, anyway, uh, and I, I haven't had a fever since I was little. So what made it scary for me, well, there are a couple things that made it scary, but I have a heart condition uh, that I've been living with and typically isn't a life-threatening uh, disease. And it's even one I could have fixed, but I've chosen not to. Uh, but then we see the risk categories with corona and cardiovascular disease is top on the list. So suddenly I'm scared. And uh, so I started actually quarantining myself and my family. So I've got three teenagers uh, before I even had symptoms because I, there, I was scared of getting it, even though I'm only 47 years old and um, this cardio thing had me worried. And then uh, one of my kids developed a cough. Um, five days later, I woke up, and my symptoms started out with actually a headache and the grumpiest I've ever been in my life. I started snapping at my family for no reason, and I put myself to bed uh, before noon. And that night I started, I developed a fever, the chills, everything, and, um, and I got really scared. It was through the night, uh, called the doctor in the morning. Um, I got screened three times before I could speak with my own doctor and which was good. They were asking me things and I have to admit I lied about my temperature because I wanted <laughs> to talk to my doctor and uh, he told me, thank goodness that my cardiovascular disease is not one that put me in a risk category. So that was a huge relief. Uh, here in the Netherlands, they don't test you unless to see if you actually have the disease unless you are deemed critical. So unless you are actually admitted to the hospital because you need a respirator or something. Thankfully, I never got to that point. So um, I guess, sorry, this is a long story. I'll, I'll try to make it short. Um, I was relieved not to be in a risk category. We decided let's all five of us stay at, at home, even though they hadn't made, made that a, a mandate here yet. And that wasn't easy with three teenagers. Um, I think my husband had the worst deal of all of us actually. <laughs> Cause I pretty much slept it off up in my 
roof terrace in the sun. We had this beautiful weather. Um, but so my fever never went away for the first 17 days. Um, it, I did have different energy level. I was really tired most of the time. And then I would feel like, hey, I can do something. And I would uh, join a call and 20 minutes into it, I would have to lay down or disconnect somehow. And um, I was surprised you know, how tired I was. And then the next day after I, I remember one day I did a call or I was on a call only for 20 minutes and the next day my fever spiked, I was feeling worse and I was kicking myself. So there's a lot of chatter going on in, in my head. You know, and I, I imagine um, people who are going through this have the same, you know, you're scared. I was wondering when is this going to get ugly, trying to figure out when it would get ugly if it does. And then the more I would look, you know, read online to try to find out what are the typical symptoms for a mild case, I would only hear the scary stories, the really sad and tragic ones, and that just made it worse. Um, uh, on day 10, my breathing did get, uh, it was hard to breathe. And I, so called the doctor, they decided uh, to invite me in. And then I was really embarrassed because I wasn't breathing. It wasn't hard enough. So I learned something that day, which was interesting. If you can walk up a flight of stairs, your breathing is okay. It's not bad enough to warrant uh, hospitalization, which I thought would be good to know. And that was a huge relief uh, because at that point I had sort of shifted from fear of this getting bad to, I did a lot of breathing exercises to manage my heart. I was worried that it would do its thing, which is go from normal to over 200 beats a minute. That's what my condition does um, sometimes. And I didn't want that to happen. So I was really trying to stay calm. And I would say it was uh, a very um, reflective experience where I shifted from being afraid of this getting bad and dying to gratitude uh, for <laughs> simple things like the sun. Um, but my life, I've, I realized I've had a a really good life. I'm very grateful for my family, for my experiences, for everything I've been able to do. And although I, I, I didn't want to die, I still don't. Um, I got to the point of peace. It would be okay. And then I, so, and, and if I come through this, I want to help others. So I started thinking about what could I do to fill the gaps. So there's really, I noticed that there isn't much support out there for people with what they deem a mild case. It felt heavy, but because I wasn't hospitalized, it's called mild, um, which is understandable because we don't have enough resources to help the people who are really in serious condition. Uh, so I had a couple ideas and I've started to implement them can share that later when uh, okay. the time's right. Thank you for sharing that story. And at this moment in time, you are feeling how? Feeling so much better. So it's been almost three weeks since I had a fever. Okay. Uh, and I'm still tired. Uh, uh, I don't have my energy. All, I would say it's about 70%. 70%. So, um, but it's coming back and I'm started. I did yoga today. And I still can't do downward dog. I still get dizzy when I do that, but um, I'm working on it. So cool. I'm almost there. I have a dog that does downward dog really well. I'm like, oh, that's where that thing comes from. You, know? you watch the dog <laughs> stretching, you're like, oh, that was perfect. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I was watching you uh, listen to Jessica and I. There's a couple of times where you were really nodding along with her. So I'd love for you to share your journey and some possible similarities and differences from what you experience. Uh, thank you. Uh, yes, actually, when listening to Jessica, I was not even, yeah, it happened, you know, and, uh, you know, I was feeling that way. So there were something similar. Mine is that, as you know me, I, I love traveling and moving and everything. So I spent 
you know, uh, every month, uh, a week in New York City. And, uh, and while I'm there, um, whether it's working with clients or joining life. So I was returning early March and I arrived, I, I can tell you because it's in my head, the 9th of March and uh, on, at night and uh, from New York. And then on Wednesday, I start feeling chills. I said, how strange, immediately an alarm. New York chills, <gasps> something can, can be happening. And in Mexico at that time, I remember uh, they were only, because we were late in the process, so there were only 80 cases of coronavirus in the whole country, okay? So yeah. it was not very everybody, okay? So I went to the uh, doctor and said, what's going on? And he said, well, there's a protocol. And then finally they took my test because I got to 39 centigrades. I'm also centigrades. Okay, so 39 centigrade, which is, it feels horrible inside. I don't know if what normal or whatever, but this is high. And he sent me to the hospital and took me positive. And, uh, and from that on, it was just a terrible fever, just as Jessica. It felt horrible because I was tired, um, whatever. And um, so, uh, and, and there was nothing to do, but just to lock yourself. And I sent everybody outside. There was only one left, which is my dog. And I hope she doesn't bark while we're talking. Okay, mm -hmm. she uh, was my companion and that was nothing. So um, it was just very humbling. I will go into that hopefully uh, to share some of that, but it was just a uh, 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 fever because you don't know where is this going to take you. Exactly, uncertainty completely about what's next in your life and can you imagine what goes through your mind so um about it was until last monday not this monday the prior week uh that i got my results negative so mm -hmm. uh coronavirus and uh, but i must say that i got better after about 10 days uh i had no fever so begin my normality uh this and, and I've been enjoying good health since then. I feel great, but um, I'm still in quarantine because we're in phase three in here in Mexico right now. Yeah. So that's it. That's my, that's my uh, story about what happened. But by the way, I must say, uh, I never imagined that I will be a significant number in the whole country. So when I see, they told me that I had coronavirus, I was 81 in the whole country. So. I became a, a, a relevant number at one point. Okay, thank you, sorry. <laughs> so Jessica, you, um, just for both of you, thank you for sharing your story. I think helping a lot of us understand what is it that this uh, disease feels like. Um, Jessica, just, you know, you said you had a couple of insights from your experience. Um, so well, I'd be curious as to what some of those are. Hmm. On a personal level or the ideas of how I could help others? Just both, whatever it is you feel like you want to share. Yeah, okay. Um, so on a personal level, uh, really that I've had a good life and it would be, um, I was at peace, I am still at peace. So I, I have to say ever since I went through that experience, I'm uh, feeling calm mm. and I would say more connected with uh, let what will ever happen, happen. Um, what will be, will be. And I really got busy thinking about how can I help others who are uh, going through this okay. after me and realize there isn't much support out there for people to support them. And, and I um, felt myself disconnected from people who didn't understand, right? So for example, my husband, he was doing his best to be empathetic. Um, and he kept saying, you'll be okay. And I kept, that was like the worst thing to say to me. You don't know that no one does. Right. Um, so I wanted, I, I want to support people who are going through it uh, by 
in, well, asking people to share their, their survival stories. So like we're doing here, I was so um, thankful, Nick, for this opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, and also Jorge, that you're sharing yours. Uh, I think the more that we can talk about uh, those of us who've come through it can talk about our experiences and, and help provide some of that clarity. I know that uh, symptoms differ and, but I still wanted to know what could they be. And it was, I posted on Facebook, uh, asked people, you know, I want to hear about survival stories. And I only heard one uh, in Finland. Um, that was the only one that all of my friends could find. So I've created a Facebook page just two days ago. It's very small right now, but hopefully it'll kick off. And I wrote out my, my experience. I, I kept data. So when I was sick, I was putting, I was entering in my phone, my, my temperature and what was I feeling, my psychological mental well, state. Yeah. And I was typing it out uh, two days ago and my dog was sitting on my phone. I didn't know because I was reading on my phone and then typing it on my computer. And all of a sudden I hear the da 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 da. You know, my dog was scratching himself and he deleted <laughs> the whole second week of my oh, illness. Oh, data. no. So I wrote out my story and it starts out with a lot of detail. And then the second week is like, well, this is what I remember. And it's based on WhatsApp messages to my family. And um, anyway, so I'd like to try to provide some comfort by sharing our so example. If somebody wants to find you on Facebook, how would they do that? Uh, my Facebook page is called Supporting Mild COVID-19 Cases. It's okay, that's, very inspiring. <laughs> well, at, least at least it's clear what it is. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Another thing I want to do, if there's interest, is have a group call. So I want to schedule regular calls for people who'd like to connect with other people who have the symptoms. So I have information on that as well on the page. Okay. We'll and I'll post that, that uh, pro bono. Thank you, Jessica. So that's a little bit about your experience and some of your insights. Corey, you and I had a conversation last week where we were talking about some of your insights and it seems there's some similarities between some of the experience you had and what Jessica was talking about. But I'd love you to just share what this taught you. Oh, wow. Thank you. Uh, it's um, the first thing I wanted to do when I got I was feeling terrible, is to disconnect everything that was TV, radio. And I should say, maybe for some people say, what, why would you? But I didn't want to hear, I didn't want noise. So I have not watched TV nor radio since, well, since early March. And what I wanted to do is just to slow down. And by slow down, I mean, and not have noise and be able to listen to what's really important. So I started listening to things as a result of that and uh, of what mattered. And it was wonderful. Uh, while I was listening. And, um, and one of the things is that we need to eliminate noise and slow down. And, and, and it slowed me down, okay? And, uh, and to hear those voices that are, that are telling us what matters. Second thing, I immediately, it was very weird, but even on the darkest moment, in which my temperature was 39. And I really didn't know, and I had uncertainty of what's next. And believe me, I felt like it crossed my mind. I'm not as young as Jessica, and that it felt my mind that it could be the time to go. And, and how would I feel? And I felt peace. I. I it's just the weirdest thing that even if you're gonna die or not, you feel peace. But I was so grateful because I felt peace because I felt I had a wonderful life, which I must say I have had. I 
people were pouring with things, friends and uh, uh, friendship and love. And also, maybe not everybody experiences that, but that's how I would see it. And also that I have been doing things and I've been doing things that I love with people that I share, whether you're a client, a friend, or who knows, you know, I, I'm just living my purpose. And, and my purpose is to help and serve. And my purpose is to help me connect things and just not to feel, find your whys, you know? So I felt peace. So that's the other thing. I discovered what it is like, how wonderful it can be, okay? Um, other thing, it made me be more present. I was reading myself, and, and as a coach, of course, we always talk about, but somehow I became, I feel, uh, more present. And one of the things I must say is that I also learned, and as you, I told you, my, my purpose from even young is to serve. And we're used to serving, serving and giving and, and helping and everything. And here I am at the other end now, when I'm feeling my worst moment, and these people, my friends came, and the day that I locked myself, there were a mountain of food at my door. Water, I still drinking water, I don't know when I'm gonna finish all this water. There are tons of water, mountains of water, and I just finished some of these supplies that these people gave me, <laughs> and they put there. And I tell you, I was feeling, I don't know how to react because I'm used to serve, not to be served. So I had to learn how to receive wow. and be intentional and grateful for that and let, it, and let them do it. Not say, I, I don't need more water. I don't, no, let them do it. Why? because you are helping them, serving you, and being blessed in their lives by serving. So I had to learn to receive. This is weird, but I, and with a good heart, and because it's part of your purpose to, to let them uh, 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 do that. So uh, uh, a lot of uh, gratefulness uh, for that. Um, the other thing, I, I, I don't want to go on to a long list. I don't know think if you're going to ask me more, but I, I'm just into this flow right now. And, uh, but one of the things that I felt um, that has happened to me, I'm very private in terms of, although you see me extrovert, but yeah, when for some things, I, I like to, they're very, very, very personal. And uh, it just, it's it's very different. I and I'm very uh, confidential with about uh, of my clients, my material, and everything. I, I just don't, and particularly in my life. Okay, in, in some per, very personal thing. So one thing that I learned is that you have to share. And Jessica, I was listening to you, and basically said, I love it. And so it has made me be more myself and be more authentic. Show it. Don't be afraid of saying uh, what happened, how it is. Because I was not telling people, not by messages and any writing, only the ones that talk to me, I will share. So I felt that I have learned to become more open and be more authentic. And why not be more vulnerable and be if whatever they criticize, whatever. And, and humble, because if anything, we learn to be more humble this. So I just became more now vulnerable and, and open uh, in, and just be me and share my story. And I found the impact has been so different, okay? Because just people want to know, they want to hear uh, you know, uh, about of vulnerabilities and uh, they want to relate to that. And uh, so it's been, these are some of the things that just come into my mind about my, about my learning, okay? And, uh, and uh, so 
the mindset is very important that you see this as part of your journey, as part of your discovery. Uh, uh, Nick calls them the crucibles, cr crucibles uh, uh, there. So uh, it has become one, and why not share it? And why not be vulnerable? So why don't be more you? Okay, so people want that these days. Okay, I feel that's it for me. Okay, those uh, are sorry to take so long, Nick. No, it was beautiful. Uh, I, I think, um, yeah, I'd love Jessica. Um, any final words from you based on what you've heard from Jorge? I, I'm so inspired by your story, Jorge. Thank you for sharing that. I, I really am. Um, I have two quotes that I'd like to share. Um, one is by Mae West, who is, I think she was a very cool lady. You only live once, but if you do it right, once is enough. And I think that's sort of the space that I got, I came into uh, through this. And another one I uh, came across this morning um, by Pope Francis. Rivers do not drink their own water. Trees do not eat their own fruit. The sun does not shine on itself and flowers do not spread their fragrance for themselves. Living for others is a rule of nature. We are all born to help each other. No matter how difficult it is, life is good when you're happy, but much better when others are happy because of you. Mm. Thank you very much. So tell us your purpose one more time. Crazy waves and angel wings use the magic to fly. Love that. Jorge, any final words for me? Uh, my, if I may say again, it's, uh, and I know we're speaking to different audiences, sure. but if there are anybody that is a leader, whether it's in an organization or at your home or with your friend, I would say uh, keep being an authentic leader. Be vulnerable, humble yeah. yourself, okay? And my quote, and you asked for a quote, and it's so interesting, Jessica, uh, because uh, also it's a quote from a spiritual leader. And, uh, and he, 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 maybe not known to many probably, because it's a small group in the congregation, but it's called, it, his name is, uh, is President Thomas S. Monson. Uh, president of uh, of the church of that church and anyway and it's, it it goes this way find joy in the journey today there is no tomorrow to remember if we do not do something today hmm. Still remind us of your purpose Ah, oh, my purpose, I'm the curious Cub Scout leader who awakens your passion and helps you connect the dots to find your beautiful why and how. Let's have a blast. So I wanna thank both of you for uh, living your purpose as we speak. So my name is Nick Craig. My purpose is to wake you up, to truly wake you up and have you really, really finally be home. So I hope listening to this podcast has helped all of you listening get a sense of your purpose and being able to connect to it. And I want to also just thank the two of you for sharing your stories with us in this moment where having the visible sign of how this can be in a way it is a very powerful, it is a beautiful message for all of us to be able to have. So thank you both for joining me. Thank, thank you. you.